Bună ziua tuturor! Stimate domnule prorector al Universității Ovidius din Constanța, profesor universitar dr. Mihai Gârțu, stimate domnule decan al Facultății de Istorie și Științe Politice din cadrul Universității Ovidius, conferența universitară dr. Emanuel Plopeanu, stimate domnule prodecan al Facultății de Istorie și Științe Politice din cadrul Universității Ovidius din Constanța, conferența universitară dr. Daniel Citirigă, stimați reprezentanți ai Uniunii Democrate a Tătarilor Turcomusulmani din, din România și ai comunității tătare din, din România, stimați studenți și stimați uh, invitați, Uh, astăzi organizăm o masă rotundă uh, în care, de fapt, principalii organizatori sunt uh, Universitatea Ovidius din Constanța prin Institutul pentru Studii de Dezvoltare și Securitate la Marea Neagră și Uniunea Democrată a Tătarilor Turco-Musulmani din România, un eveniment pe care îl dedicăm memoriei unei personalități tătare, un scriitor, teolog, și, și om politic, Numan Celibi Gihan, președintele primului stat în sens modern al, al tătarilor, Republica Populară Crimea, un stat care a avut o existență scurtă în perioada 1917-1918. Nu vreau să lungesc foarte mult introducerea, pentru că nu vreau să profit de bunăvoința domnului prorector care și-a făcut timp în programul încărcat al dumnealui să, să participe și uh, aș vrea să uh, să-i dau cuvântul uh, pentru câteva uh, cuvinte de, de, pentru salutul domniei sale, uh, care va fi în engleză, având în vedere că uh, avem și un, un invitat din, din afara țării, despre care voi vorbi eu pe, pe parcursul întâlnirii. Vă mulțumesc. Domnule prorector, aveți cuvântul. Da, mulțumesc mult. Um, I will say a few words in English to uh, honor our uh, international guests. Uh, I would like to, uh, dear um, distinguished guests, dear colleagues, um, um, I would like to um, extend to you the welcome from um, uh, the part of um, Ovidius University managerial team on behalf of the rector of the university, uh, Professor uh, Dan Iliescu, um, as we strongly encourage the activity of the Black Sea Institute for Development and Security Studies. Um, an institute that we set up a couple of years ago, and uh, we happily see that uh, it gets strength and it becomes more and more uh, active. Uh, the topic that you uh, um, cho chose to discuss today is very dear to um, Ovidius University and uh, to the uh, community that it represents as uh, Uh, Constanza is a place with uh, very uh, diverse, with many minorities, and uh, the Tatar minority has uh, contributed um, uh, uh, significantly to uh, the development of the region, of the city. Um, we also know that there are uh, problems, uh, there are uh, presently some challenges uh, in um, uh, Crimea, in uh, eastern uh, Ukraine. So the topic that you are uh, now discussing is uh, also very uh, timely, uh, very um, uh, uh, important uh, uh, right at this, uh, this moment. Um, I encourage uh, Dr. Omer to continue uh, such uh, roundtables. This is a very important uh, beginning, and I think that it can continue in a series of events where many minorities around the Black Sea uh, would be um, um, 
presented and uh, guests would uh, would speak about their pro uh, problems and uh, challenges and maybe knowing each other better we can contribute to uh, a better place for all of us around the, um, uh, the Black Sea. Uh, so I want to, uh, to thank you, uh, Metin, for organizing this, for the idea. I want to thank uh, uh, the colleagues from uh, the Faculty of History and Political Sciences for their continuous support. Um, to the international guests and our partners, uh, uh, regional, local partners here in Constanza. Um, I want to uh, wish you a very fruitful and uh, pleasant time together. And um, I will leave by saying that, um, um, apologizing that I have to leave early, but uh, I want to say that uh, the meeting I'm going to, to enter in a couple of minutes uh, is in fact um, um, uh, directed to writing a proposal for um, uh, research and innovation in the Black Sea area, together with with ISCDI, the executive unit for um, uh, management of research in Romania. We are very happy that they are inviting us to be part of the uh, project. And uh, on my turn, I invite you to uh, participate uh, in this uh, in this proposal um, in the uh, following days. Uh, again, uh, congratulations and success. Thank you for, uh, for the invitation. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Vice Rector. It's an honor for, uh, for us to, to have you here. Uh, and as, as you pointed, uh, this is the first roundtable or the first event from a series uh, we called History, Culture and Communities at the Black Sea. Uh, for me, uh, I, I have to confess that I'm very happy that the, the first event is dedicated to, to the history of, and culture of, uh, of the Tatars. Uh, and thank you, thank you again for your uh, support. Uh, before starting the, the roundtable, uh, I would like to uh, make a brief, um, I'd say, comment or uh, to, to give some, uh, some information. We uh, we are three speakers, uh, one of them, Mr. Cosmin Popa, uh, he has uh, has some problems and I think that uh, he will join us, uh, us later. Uh, I will be the first speaker, I will uh, give a short presentation about the, the life and, and the importance of Numancere Bijihan for the, uh, the Crimean Tatars and uh, Tatars uh, all around the, the, the world. And after that, uh, Professor Felix Tutkwaiden uh, will talk about the uh, situation of the Crimean Tatars after the, the annexation. So my presentation will be in Romanian and the, the presentation of Professor Felix Tutkwaiden will be in, in English. And the, the intervention of uh, Professor Cosmin Popa, I think it will be in, uh, in uh, Romanian. Uh, bun, uh, vă mulțumesc încă o dată tuturor că uh, ați uh, dat curs uh, invitației de a participa la, la acest eveniment dedicat memoriei uneia dintre cele mai importante uh, personalități ale, uh, ale tătarilor, o personalitate care a devenit un simbol al... Uh, luptei tătarilor pentru a-și păstra uh, identitatea și a uh, putea trăi în ceea ce este spațiul lor uh, natal, peninsula, peninsula Crimea. Uh, pentru a înțelege uh, importanța lui, lui Celebi Gihan, trebuie să ne, ra ne raportăm și la contextul în care uh, acesta uh, s-a dezvoltat, momentul în care, în care s-a născut. Nu, nu se știe cu exactitate când, uh, dat, dat exact a nașterii lui, lui Celevi Gihan, știm doar anul 1885, uh, era la trei uh, ani după ce, de la uh, momentul în care în Crimea a început să fie publicat 
ziarul Tergiuman, uh, un ziar publicat de o altă mare personalitate a uh, tătarilor, dar uh, nu numai, ci a întregii lumi turcice, Ismail Gasfural, care uh, momentul 1883 este uh, momentul în care putem vorbi despre o uh, renaștere uh, tătărească. De ce? Pentru că de la 1783 până la 1883 este uh, perioada pe care uh, tătarii o denumesc Caranluc Iuzil, adică secolul negru. Pentru că începând de, uh, de la 1783 când Hanatul Crimei a fost anexat de de Imperiul Rus, până în 1883, singura activitate, dacă o putem spune așa între ghilimele, pe care tătarii din Crimea au făcut, a fost aceea să emigreze. Au emigrat din cauza presiunilor la care erau supuși de autoritățile ruse. De altfel, este perioada în care se formează și comunitatea tătărească din Dobrogea, în mod special după războiul Crimei când are loc cel mai mare val de, de emigrare dinspre peninsulă spre Imperiul Otoman, atunci Dobrogea fiind parte a Imperiului Otoman, s-au așezat și în, în, acest, în acest teritoriu. De ce este important Gaspura L? Pentru că uh, el a, a promovat uh, o deschidere a, a comunității Tătare a promovat reforma învățământului comunității tătare și uh, uh, toate acestea sub forma uh, motoului care a devenit, uh, devenit celebru, unitate în uh, limbă, idee și, și fapte. Uh, începând cu uh, Gaspura L, care și a promovat ideile odată prin ziarul Tergiuman, dar și mai important prin uh, școlile sale de, uh, în care aplica o nouă metodă de învățare, usulul Gedid, uh, începe să se formeze o uh, elită, elită tătară. Și această elită tătară care se formează la școlile lui, uh, lui Gasprală, poartă denumirea de uh, junii tătari, sigur și ca uh, urmare a influenței, uh, influenței junilor turci, Uh, în, acest, uh, în acest context uh, are loc și uh, formarea lui, uh, lui Celebi Gihan, care uh, învață în școli uh, reformate de, de Ismail Gasprală, în care se preda prin noua, noua metodă și care intră în contact cu uh, ideile uh, junilor tătari. Sigur, există o diferență între ceea ce promova Gasprală și ceea ce promovau uh, junii tătari, și anume Gasprală era adeptul creării unei uh, unități între popoarele turcice, pentru că uh, în, în Rusia, uh, în Imperiul Rus, atunci uh, trăiau foarte mulți uh, reprezentanți ai popoarelor turcice și musulmani, ba chiar uh, erau mai mulți musulmani decât în Imperiul Otoman. Uh, în schimb, junii tătari uh, adoptă o atitudine un pic mai uh, tranșantă, uh, dacă putem spune așa, și anume promovează crearea, dreptul la, uh, cumva, dreptul la autodeterminare al tătarilor, dreptul acestora de a uh, își crea propriul, uh, propriul stat în, uh, în peninsula Crimea. Uh, un moment important în, în viața lui Celebi Gihan se petrece în 1906, pentru că atunci decide să, să-și continue studiile pe care le începuse în satul, în satul natal, undeva în nordul Crimei, în satul Biuxonac, dar le continuase și la Zingili Medrese, una dintre cele mai importante școli din istoria tătarilor crimeeni, fondată pe la 1500, de Hanul Menglighi Rai. Dar pentru a-și definitiva studiile, alege să, să, să meargă la, la Istanbul, unde urmează școala, o, o școală teologică, dar și dreptul. 
Și de ce este important uh, această, acest moment? Pentru că uh, se petrec schimbări importante în, în politica uh, Imperiului Otoman, în viața politică din Imperiul Otoman. Uh, nu după mult timp, uh, la 1908, uh, începe a doua perioadă constituțională în, în Turcia, perioadă de care vor profita și tătarii aflați la, la studii în, în, în Istanbul și vor, vor pune bazele câtorva, câtorva asociații. La fel este importantă această, decizi, această decizie și prin prisma faptului că acolo, la, la Istanbul, își, se întâlnește cu alți tineri tătari din Crimea aflați la, la studii, tineri care, uh, uh, cu care, de fapt, va și colabora foarte strâns uh, în demersurile sale politice ulterioare și uh, cea mai importantă uh, persoană în acest sens este uh, Jafer Seyd Ahmed Kırmer. Împreună cu uh, Jafer Seyd Ahmed Kırmer, Numan Celebi Jihan, dar și cu alți tineri, în 1908, pun bazele Crâm Talebe Gemieti, care uh, asociația uh, studenților tătari, elevilor tătari din uh, crimeieni aflați, uh, aflați la Istanbul. Și deja în acest moment își, uh, își exprimă, uh, de fapt, uh, dorința sau ceea ce își, își propun să, să facă. Și anume, pe lângă încercarea de a crea o coeziune între studenții tătari aflați la, la studii în, în Istanbul și a-și ajuta semenii, Cârâmer și Celebi Jihan încearcă să uh, adauge în statutul acestei asociații faptul că uh, asociația își își propune să, să creeze un stat tătăresc în, în peninsula Crimea. Aici are loc o, din această cauză are loc și o neînțelegere între, între cele Bigi Han Kırmer și ceilalți, ceilalți tineri care își participau la înființarea acestei asociații și um, este momentul în care Kırmer și uh, uh, Celebi Jihan aleg să uh, creeze o asociație secretă, asociația Vatan Gemieti, asociația pentru patrie, care va sta și uh, va fi motorul principal al uh, creierii Republicii Populare Crimea în, în 1917. De ce? Pentru că după ce își termină studiile uh, la Istanbul, după ce se întorc în peninsula Crimea în 1912, uh, Kırmer și Celebi Jihan uh, încep să uh, creeze filiale ale acestei asociații în diverse uh, regiuni importante pentru în care trăiau comunități importante de tătari. Și o primă filială a acestei asociații este deschisă la, la Odessa, iar a doua la Acmeșit în, în Simferopol și în, la Kezlev, la, la Iefatoria. Contextul pentru ca cele Bigi Han să își spună în, în aplicare Ideile este creat odată cu primul război mondial și mai ales cu Revoluția Rusă. Profitând de, de acest context, cei, cei doi, împreună cu alți membri ai comunității, încep să organizeze o serie de, de congrese. Și cel mai important din, cele mai importante dintre acestea sunt uh, două congrese pe care le-au ținut, în, uh, le-au organizat în 1917, congrese ale uh, musulmanilor din, uh, din Crimea, în, uh, în urma primului congres uh, la care au participat uh, 
2000 de, de delegați. A fost ales un comitet de conducere format din 45 de membri, iar Celebi Gihan a fost ales uh, președinte al acestui comitet de conducere și în același timp muftiu al Crimei uh, și Poloniei Lit și Lituaniei. Cel de-al doilea congres al musulmanilor crimeieni, ținut în octombrie 1917, este cel care a decis organizarea alegerilor pentru un curultai al tătarilor, un parlament al tătarilor, alegeri care s-au organizat o lună mai târziu și în urma cărora, la 13 de la începutul lunii decembrie a fost ales uh, un, uh, un, uh, un guvern, uh, iar la 13 decembrie uh, sau 26 decembrie, 13 decembrie după calendarul vechi și în România la 13 decembrie se și sărbătorește, sărbă, se marchează, este marcată sărbătoarea uh, etniei tătare, a fost declarată formarea Republicii Populare Crimea cu Celebi Gihan președinte. De ce este importantă această republică, dincolo de faptul că este primul stat modern, după Hanatul Crimei, este primul stat modern al, al tătarilor, Uh, el are și câteva particularități. Uh, a fost, curultaiul a fost a, ales uh, acordându-se drept de vot și uh, drept de uh, a fi alese și femeilor. De altfel, din, uh, din curultai, din cei uh, 76 de membri ai uh, curultaiului, al Parlamentului Tătar, uh, 5 uh, au, fost, uh, au fost femei. Sigur, acest stat nu a avut, această republică nu a avut o existență îndelungată, pentru că tătarilor le lipseau atunci un element important care le-ar fi permis să țină în viață acest stat, și anume o, o armată. Chiar dacă au fost, au existat câteva inițiative de a aduce o, un regiment de cavalerie tătar, exista un regiment de cavalerie tătar uh, în Crimea, dar acesta nu a putut face față armatei uh, bolșevicilor aflați la, la Sevastopol. Uh, la începutul lui ianuarie, uh, trupele bolșevice de la, din Sevastopol au înaintat spre, uh, spre Simferopol, spre Bașcesara și uh, Simferopol, punând capăt existenței acestui stat tătăresc în, în februarie. Celebi Gihan, numai Celebi Gihan, a fost prins și arestat. La, doar că la 23 februarie 1918, fără a exista o judecată, a fost împușcat trupul s-au fiind aruncat în mare, ne mai fiind recuperat niciodată. Sigur, memoria lui, lui Celebi Gihan și faptele sale au continuat să inspire generațiile următoare de tătari și lideri ai tătarilor. El a este cunoscut pentru comunitatea tătară ca uh, Antl Shehit, adică uh, martirul cu, cu jurământ. Pentru că, dincolo de activitatea sa uh, politică, uh, el este și aici iar un, un element de, care arată importanța sa pentru comunitatea tătară, Uh, el este și autorul imnului tătarilor, Antet Kemen, Am jurat, imn care a fost adoptat în 1917 și care uh, este uh, acceptat și, uh, și astăzi. Uh, și dincolo de uh, calitatea sa de, de om politic uh, pentru, pentru tătari, de asemenea, este și... Uh, 
important pentru dezvoltarea literaturii tătare, el având mai multe poezii și scrieri, dintre acestea un, un moment important sau un loc important în dezvoltarea literaturii tătare îl, îl ocupă Carel Gaștar Doasă, pe care rugăciunea rândunicii, pe care l-a publicat în 1908 și care prezintă principalele sale idei cu privire la dezvoltarea comunității tătare, la ruperea de conservatorismul religios și, la, și cu privire la modernizarea școlii în, în rândul tătarilor. După moartea lui Celevi Gihan, ceea ce am putea numi uh, Centrul Mișcării uh, Naționale a Tătarilor, a fost în România. Uh, din motive uh, practice, pentru că uh, România era un stat care uh, permitea existența unei astfel de, de mișcări, având în vedere relația pe care o avea cu Rusia sovietică. Uh, și mișcare care s-a dezvoltat în, în jurul revistei ML, care a început să apară în 1930, mai întâi la Bazargic și apoi, uh, și apoi la Constanța. Uh, eu cam atât aș vrea să, aș vrea să mă opresc aici, uh, ca să nu monopolizez discuția. Uh, între timp salut și uh, participarea domnului uh, profesor Cosmin Popa. Uh, dar uh, vă, vă salut și eu și vă, mă, vă, mă, vă rog să îmi cer, îmi cer iertare pentru, pentru întârziere. Și... Uh, nu face nimic. Uh, propun ca partea de întrebări și răspunsuri să o lăsăm la final, că, după pre, toate cele trei, uh, cele trei prezentări. Filis uh, Hogeam, I would like to invite you now. Uh, to give your uh, presentation, uh, but before that, I will uh, present a short biography of uh, of yours in uh, in uh, Romanian. Um, înainte de a da cuvântul uh, doamne profesoare Filis Tutcoaidan, uh, deși dumneai este Uh, profesoară la uh, Universitatea de Științe Sociale din, din Ankara, la Facultatea de uh, Științe Politice. Uh, aș vrea să uh, subliniez faptul că uh, are legături destul de strânse cu uh, Dobrogea. Uh, este membră a unei familii care a emigrat în perioada interbelică din, din România în Turcia, familie care își are originile în, în localitatea Cobadin din, din, din Dobrogea. Filis Tutko Aydın este absolventă a Universității Bilkent, unde a urmat unde e ciclu de, de licență și de, și de masterat. Mai târziu, continuându-și studiile doctorale la Universitatea din, din Toronto, având de asemenea un stagiu de învățare a limbii ruse la Universitatea Sant, de Stat San Petersburg din, din Rusia. În anul 2021 și-a publicat teza de, de doctorat la editura Palgrave Macmillan, teză de doctorat cu titlul Emigre, Exile, Diaspora and Transnational Movements of the Crimean Tatars, Preserving the Eternal Flame of Crimea. De asemenea, are publicate două articole într-un volum pe care am avut plăcerea să îl coordonez, un destin la Marea Neagră, tătarii din, din Dobrogea, Uh, articolele uh, doamnei profesoare Filis Tutcoaidân, fiind despre identitatea etnonațională a diasporei tătare crimeene din România în perioada comunistă și naționalismul tătar crimean de diasporă în România postcomunistă. Uh, 
Iar uh, titlul uh, prezentării de astăzi este The Occupation of Crimea, Crimean Tatar and the Spirit of Kurultai. Professor Phyllis, the floor, is, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, mulțumesc. Uh, thank you. Uh, bună ziua, everybody. Uh, can you hear me all right? Okay. And you can see my slides. Sağ olunuz, Metin Hocam. I am so happy to be here. Uh, as Metin Hocam uh, just told, uh, I have done uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, not uh, very much, but uh, a little bit, let's say, uh, field work on the Crimean Tatars in Romania in the year 2005 and 2006. And I have uh, a chance to also visit and meet my relatives and all my cousins there. Uh, so it was like the movie Roots for me. And although we are Crimean Tatars, uh, like my ancestors or my, my grandparents, they uh, mostly are nostalgic about Romania rather than uh, Crimea. Uh, that's how my uh, grandmother was. She always, you know, until she died, she always told me about Romania and how a great place it was when she was born. So I had this chance of going there and visiting the, uh, her village she was born and all of, uh, you know, her relatives there. So it's, uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here uh, on this very important day. Uh, the martyrdom of Numan Celebi Jihan, uh, the national martyr of Crimean Tatars, first prime minister of the uh, Crimean Tatar uh, Kurultai. Uh, and I wanted to, I mean, based on my research, I could say if we can, if we get on a time machine right now and go to Dobruja of 1930s and visit each Tatar village in Dobruja, right? Today, there would be on the 23rd of uh, February, there would be uh, Quran recitals and prayings, you know, Mevlut uh, for uh, Celebi Jihan's uh, soul. So, uh, the, in a way, I wanted to perhaps underline the fact that, you know, the spirit of Kurultai is uh, very much alive, has been very much alive in Romania. And even uh, during the communist era that uh, was, uh, you know, continued under the, you know, uh, despite some of the pressures from the regime. And after the end of communism in Romania, uh, I observed that this day again has become uh, an important day that brings Crimean Tatars together. They resolve against their, their fight against Russian uh, colonization of their homeland. So, and also I wanted to uh, uh, celebrate uh, the multicultural spirit of Romania uh, and respect of minorities and diasporas in this country. Uh, this also, I think, is, is a very important issue and it's missing so much in other places the Crimean Tatars are, uh, diaspora is living right now. Um, so today, the, to my, the to uh, topic of my talk will be uh, on the uh, occupation of Crimea, uh, the, the results of the occupation and the resistance of the Crimean Tatars for uh, the occupation that has taken place in 2014. Um, so uh, if we wanted to recap the Crimean Tatar history, the main highlights would be the Russian annexation of Crimea, of course, in 1873, and exodus of Crimean Tatars settling in Dobruja, you know, uh, the foundation of the city of Medjidie, right? And also Anatolia, especially the northern shores, central Anatolia. Uh, and after Romania's independence from the Ottoman Empire, of course, Crimean Tatars became uh, citizens of that country. And others became citizens of Turkey. 
Second important uh, event in the history of Crimean Tatars have been the national movement, as Metin Hocam uh, mentioned, initiated by Ismail Bey Gasparalı, which culminated in the Kurultai in 1917, uh, which was uh, the first ever democratic parliament in a Muslim society. So we were a little bit uh, ahead of even Azerbaijan a few months ahead. And the first parliament in the world, perhaps, that fully recognizes women's political rights. Uh, and even in the West, as you know, the suffrage came a, a lot more later. Uh, a third event for the Crimean Tatar history is the national tragedy of 18 May 1944. Uh, in which Crimean Tatars, at which uh, Crimean Tatars were deported from their homeland by Stalin. And uh, the next important event was the return of the Crimean Tatars who were deported in the 1990s and uh, declaration of the Second uh, National Congress. So the first one being the kind of uh, Kurultai in 1917, the Crimean Tatars numbered uh, the Congress in 1992 as the second Kurultai. So they, they kind of uh, underlined the discontinuity between the Kurultai spirit. Uh, and as you know, the uh, the last uh, most important event is the occupation of Crimea in 2014. So I wanted to underline this uh, common trend in Crimean Tatar history. There is this attempt of Russian colonization and recolonization and detatarization of Crimean Tatars and Crimean Tatars each time bouncing back, right? Uh, creating their return movement, creating their national movement, and right now creating a resistance movement uh, against the occupation. So that's uh, that's the gist of, I would say, the Korean Tatar history. Uh, yes, uh, I mentioned a little bit that, you know, this Kurultai spirit uh, has lived both in Romania and in Turkey, but maybe more in Romania in the 1930s, because, you know, Turkey had a very uh, strict uh, one-party government at the time. So even the Crimean Tatar movement was prohibited while it flourished in Romania. So Romania has been an important diasporic setting for Crimean Tatars to develop their culture and language. Okay, uh, so if we come fast forward today, uh, the causes of occupation of Crimea. Uh, so I'm not gonna get into detail because of our limited time, uh, why uh, the, the kind of, uh, main structural causes uh, of the occupation of Crimea, going back to the dissolution of Soviet Union. Uh, but uh, in a nutshell, perhaps we could say that Russia, I mean, if there are more questions, maybe we can discuss this, but Russia did not reconcile with the collapse of the Soviet Union. And you all listened uh, Putin's speech and uh, does not recognize the uh, sovereignty. I mean, he has this revisionist approach of the national integrity, sovereignty of the states that were dissolved, uh, that were uh, became uh, independent after the fall of the Soviet Union. Uh, and uh, another reason for the occupation of Crimea was Putin's view that Russian geopolitical interests lie with the re-establishment of former Soviet sphere of influence. Uh, so I'm not saying this is the Russian geopolitical interest, but this is how he views the geopolitical interest, right? So in a way, his ideological stay standpoint is very important. Uh, his kind of cultural view of the uh, political world is important, and especially the idea of Eurasianism and Russian world, right, Slavic Orthodox civilization, as opposed to the Western civilization, has been important kind of cultural motivations for designing this event. 
but as always in the Russian case, the cultural reasons and interest reasons, they go uh, with together. So they have this uh, also motivation. Putin has this motivation of controlling Ukrainian energy corridor and the mineral and industrial resources. Again, to impose geopolitical power because for Putin always even economy is something that serves for the geopolitical power. And within this power projection, Crimea has an important role because it has a military strategic position that controls Black Sea uh, and enables access to uh, warm waters and Middle East, right? The adjacent regions. So this uh, issue uh, concerns also not only Crimean Tatars, but Turkey and Romania very much because after this move, Black Sea becomes a Russian lake and uh, territorial waters of, uh, you know, uh, half of the Black Sea uh, practically is controlled by uh, Russia. And after occupying Crimea and turning into, uh, you know, uh, part of integrating in a way, incorporating it uh, to its its uh, territory, uh, to, to its own country. Also, Putin, uh, in a way, aimed to uh, increase his declining uh, uh, public approval, right? And we see a rise of public approval uh, for his popularity after, after this move. And I think this is also one of the motivations for uh, the today's moves, but I think we are going to come to that. Uh, so uh, whatever the reasons for Russia to occupy this peninsula was this peninsula's annexation was, of course, completely illegal, unlawful, against international law, against Ukrainian law, and even against Russian law, right? Uh, so. Russia used the pretext that this territory was uh, under political threat uh, from uh, the, you know, Euromaidan demonstrators in Kiev, and uh, Russia uh, kind of created this propaganda and disinformation network, uh, which uh, he ex which they which it excelled, right? It, 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 along with its kind of hybrid war strategy. So there was this narrative created uh, and propagated all around Russia and even Ukraine that, uh, you know, there was this U.S. back operation to install Western Ukrainian nationalists, neo-Nazis, right, into power. And, um, and then, uh, that, you, that these neo-Nazis, uh, would uh, come and, uh, you know, create, I don't know, apply genocide and violence against uh, against the uh, population, right, in, in Crimea. Um, the Crimean Tatars, um, I'm going to come to that, yes, boycotted the referendum and this illegal annexation of Crimea right away. Uh, but they have they didn't uh, they didn't use violence against even the paramilitary forces uh, that were uh, that were given weapons by Russia and that were you know rolling in Crimean streets, right? Um, so this this is annexation. Uh, Ukraine's immediate reaction towards an annexation is, as uh, you know, was uh, not uh, creating a war, not not fighting, but uh, using diplomatical measures, right, to take back back Crimea and uh, Donbas as well. Um, and Ukraine actively sought Western and NATO support, uh, even asking to become a NATO member uh, in order to get under the NATO umbrella, right? Uh, and the ongoing war in Donbass, in a way we can say up until now, eclipsed the Crimean issue 
because uh, there was a continuous loss of lives. More than 10,000 people uh, on the Ukrainian side has died, right? And million uh, IDPs arrived from Donbass to inside Ukraine, which needed a lot of economic support. Um, but uh, the most important measure of Ukraine against uh, the occupation of Crimea was recognition of Crimean Tatars as indigenous people, which Crimean Tatars has been asking for a long time, almost you know since their arrival in 1990s, since 1993. Uh, this was in principle recognized by President Poroshenko, but only in 2021. Uh, this was enacted into Ukrainian legal system. Uh, what does this mean? Indigenous people means Crimean Tatars are not one of the minorities uh, in Ukraine, but they are rather, you know, they have kind of this special place because they are, uh, you know, uh, they are the autochthonous population of Crimea. They don't have any other homeland. So uh, their culture and language must be under protection by the state, and they also have a veto power for uh, any uh, usage of the environmental resources in Crimea, right? Uh, and veto power against anything that could damage uh, their um, culture. So this is in a way we could say it's kind of a national uh, uh, cultural, uh, sorry, uh, national cultural autonomy. Uh, they are, their Majlis and Kurutai, their national uh, organs, uh, democratic organs, are also uh, would be recognized, right, according to uh, this law. Right now, since Crimea is under uh, Russian occupation, there are an immediate, pragmatic, like uh, practical application. But when you know uh, Crimea will be liberated from Russia. Uh, immediately, it is already in the Ukrainian law that they uh, would get this status. But there are a lot of Crimean Tatar IDPs, so Ukraine also has taken a lot of measures to support uh, their uh, cultural uh, autonomy or to provide them means to develop their culture, maintain their culture in uh, places of exile in Ukraine. And the Crimean Tatars uh, have enjoyed uh, a very favorable status in Ukrainian politics, something they did not enjoy uh, before. Ukrainian people, we could say, got to know Crimean Tatars uh, better after the occupation. And uh, also the image of Crimean Tatars became very positive in the Ukrainian society. Uh, and these two nations, Ukrainians and Crimean Tatars, uh, came closer uh, together uh, because of this common enemy, I would say. Um, and the Crimean Tatar uh, active politicians, which were exiled from Crimea to Kiev, they were given important positions uh, in the uh, Ukrainian governmental organs, and they could kind of engineer uh, the Crimea regain strategy of Ukraine. Um, Russia, on the other hand, just immediately after the uh, occupation, vowed that it is going to uh, rehabilitate uh, Crimean Tatars and return their lands which were appropriated during the deportation and, uh, and immediately declared the Crimean Tatar as the official language of uh, Crimea. But these do not have any real meaning because they are part of the Russia's propaganda campaign. And what happens in reality is a lot different than these declarations, let alone being rehabilitated, right? Crimean Tatars are persecuted right now. Their human rights are violated. Uh, there is no talk of returning their lands or anything, right? Uh, let alone their civil rights, their human rights are not respected. Uh, so, 
the uh, occupation of Crimea uh, received protest from all of the Western states and the majority of the world states in the UN General Assembly. Uh, even China did not recognize it. And Russia was kicked out of some of the international organizations like Council of Europe, uh, G7 plus one, and many economic sanctions that you know were applied uh, for uh, to Russia and Crimea as well. So Crimea became a legally, politically, economically isolated uh, zone. One mistake which was done uh, by West and uh, France and Germany, we would say, they focused on Minsk process uh, to resolve the Donbass issue and they separated the Crimean issue from the Donbass issue. And this kind of played into Russia's hands because right after the occupation, Russian foreign policy has been accepting Crimean occupation as a settled issue, never reopening it to discussion. Uh, and this kind of uh, has been a, a big diplomatic mistake. And it did not solve anything either, as we see, you know, this week. So uh, apart from that, what is done, Ukraine applied trade blockade on Crimea, cut electricity, water, because Crimea uh, is the Ukraine is hinterland of Crimea. So it's hard for Crimea to develop a viable economy without access to Ukraine. And this is the reason actually why Khrushchev uh, gave Crimea as a present to Ukraine, right? Uh, it was not a present, it was a viable economic decision because after the deportation of Crimean Tatars, Crimean economy has deteriorated. Uh, and this is why, uh, you know, Khrushchev decided if it's tied to Ukraine, you know, it could help the, you know, redevelopment uh, of the peninsula. Um, okay, so what happened to Crimea after the occupation? It became a military base. Uh, it became, it is uh, heavily mil militarized today and Russian Navy, as you know, became the strongest Navy in Black Sea, again, threatening Romania and Turkey very much. And uh, Russia uh, controlled more than half of territorial waters. And Russia also could launch attacks to Syria, right? And could occupy part of the Syria and creating huge flow of refugees, again, to Turkey. And also encroaching Turkey from North, South, from Armenia, from Greece, uh, from Crimea, from Syria, all of its missiles. Uh, Ukraine seems to be a gas transit country. And uh, and as we learned today, Crimea became an example for, you know, scenario for occupying Donbass, though it, it is taking a larger uh, time in the case of Donbass. And economically, Crimea is actually a burden for Russia because it's totally financed by Russia. Russia had to build the catch bridge, autoway, electric stations, water desalination plants because Crimea has no water. So uh, Russia is taking Black Sea water and desalinating it, and then uh, potentially increasing the salination of Black Sea, which then again threatens Black Sea fish and all environment, right? Um, so after the occupation, the major uh, issue for the crime in Tatars have been the human rights violations. There are currently 153 Crimean Tatar prisoners, more than 50 Ukrainian prisoners. All are uh, arrested under protects of uh, terrorism, extremism. And this is uh, Article 10 of Russian Constitution. This means, for example, criticizing the occupation of Crimea, annexation of Crimea is terrorism right now. So, like, I can't make this speech, for example, in Crimea, right? And I would, I would be uh, arrested uh, for, you know, uh, and 
I could be present for 15 years. So it is, it is very uh, heavy punishment against this crime. Uh, and many crime in Tatar men are lost. There are still some paramilitary rights, uh, violence uh, in the peninsula and continuous intimidations, pressures, hard searches on the crime in Tatar population. And the remaining, uh, the major crime in Tatar leaders, the Majlis leaders and uh, Mustafa Cemile, right? The natural leader of Crimean Tatar movement was all prohibited to enter Crimea. Uh, and books on Islam and Crimean Tatar culture are also prohibited. Uh, Crimean Tatar the anniversary of deportation, commemoration of deportation is also prohibited. Crimean Tatar language schools, classes, media organizations prohibited, children's television prohibited, and Hans Palace was destroyed under the pretense of restoration. So like subway tiles are basically brought uh, to Hans Palace. It's being restored and uh, under no regard for its history and UNESCO also issued protest against that. Uh, so obviously this is another chapter in Russian recolonization policy and this trying to destroy uh, the Crimean Tatars. Okay, so what did Mejdis do against that? Mejdis already uh, has been a great supporter of Orange Revolution, Euromaidan Revolution, Ukraine's European bids, because Mejdis and Crimean Tatars believe that if Ukraine is closer to uh, the EU, right? It will, if it's more democratized, then it is more possible for crime in Tatars to attain their rights. Um, and an important decision was boycotting the referendum, as we said. Uh, and there has been large meetings uh, to support Ukrainian territorial integrity. And uh, in on 26th of February, February, even you know, until the uh, referendum and well beyond, Crimean Tatars became only maybe the only kind of organized institutionalized force uh, that supported Ukrainian uh, organized meetings and took to streets to support Ukrainian territorial integrity. And for that, they were punished uh, by September 2014. Crimean Tatar Majlis was banned and Majlis leaders were banned to enter Crimea. Uh, and uh, they were they were prosecuted according to Russian law, uh, but by that time they were already in Kiev. Some of the remaining Majlis leaders, Ilmi Umerov and Artem Chigas, Ilmi Umerov was taken to the psychiatric hospital, as they do in the Soviet times, uh, similar to what they do, and Artem Chigas was also in prison, but they were uh, uh, they were um, saved only by the initiative of President Erdogan by being exchanged to uh, Russian prisoners. So uh, I think I am a, a little bit uh, close to the end of my talk. The, uh, the, the recent important things for the attainment of uh, Crimean Tatar's rights has been uh, Ukraine's uh, finally adopting state strategy for deoccupation and reintegration uh, of Crimea and trying to bring Crimea more uh, into the uh, forefront. Uh, and also recognition of law on indigenous people, recognizing Crimean Tatars, Krimchaks, and Karais, Karaites. Uh, uh, as indigenous people of Crimea, finally. Uh, and uh, the recent attempt has been the Crimean platform just before, you know, Russia uh, hoarding large numbers of troops on the Ukrainian border. Uh, this has been the attempt of Ukraine that really angered Russia, right? 
uh, and Ukraine brought together uh, many Western and other world uh, states to protest the Crimean annexation. And they called for, uh, in this platform, in this uh, meeting, they asked for the end of Russian occupation of Crimea. Uh, and they also asked for the Crimean Tatar language and culture to be protected and called Russia as the occupier and uh, demanded Russia to respect Geneva Convention. Uh, as a response to that, Russia uh, arrested Crimean Tatar Majlis activist. I mean, one of the uh, democratically elected Majlis member, Nehriman Jalal. Of course, Majlis is right now illegal in Crimea, but they were still operating, you know, underground, trying to kind of uh, organize people's resistance against the occupation. And he, although he, like, uh, neither Nereman Jalal nor any of the Crimean Tatars has used violence trying to resist uh, the occupation. Nereman Jalal uh, is, uh, was, is, is being prosecuted for possible punishment of uh, 15 years again uh, with the charge of uh, terrorism. Uh, and uh, with that note, uh, perhaps as a concluding sentence, I could say that uh, West uh, and the world powers has been are kind of not right now paying why they have been so passive against the Russian uh, occupation of Crimea because uh, I mean history shows us that uh, Russia will not stop unless it is stopped by others. So thank you. Thank you very much, Fils Ojam, for your insightful presentation uh, about the two representative institutions of the Crimean Tatars, the Kurultai and the, the Mejlis. Uh, I'm sure that there will be questions. Uh, I, I have questions. <laughs> um, uh, before moving on, uh, and I will switch to Romanian now. <laughs> uh, excuse me, excuse me for please. interfering, uh, but uh, I think we, we can start the questions because uh, the, the, the paper of, of, of our colleague is, uh, was very interesting. So. OK, OK, I, I was going I, I was going to to give the floor to, to you. <laughs> so I think, OK, we can start the, the Q&A session. But before that, uh, I would like to welcome the, the presence of the Under Secretary of State from the Department of the uh, Minorities in Romania, uh, Mr. Dincer Jaffer. He entered uh, during the, the presentation of uh, Phyllis, uh, Phyllis Ojan. Okay, so then uh, uh, we we can start the the questions and the Q and A the Q and A session uh, in Romanian in English. Uh, we can translate. Um, uh, can can I speak? Do uh, I have to raise a hand, an electrical ha hand, because I. As, really know very good this 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 as, this tool. as you as you wish uh Fizo Jam, you can stop the presentation oh, sharing okay. the Sorry. presentation if you want uh, okay. uh mr mr cosmin popa is a researcher at the nicolai Orga institute of uh, romanian academy as I, as I, uh, thank you thank Please. you Martin. as i said i have a I, i've got a question for dr Feliz. So uh, my, 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 my question is, is there any chance to see uh, a real Tatar Crimean issue on the world agenda in these days? Because in my opinion, there, there was a lack of, uh, let's say, Tatar's ag agenda on the world first stage uh, in the last years. Uh, but now the situation is uh, uh, is changing very fast and very dramatically. 
in my opinion. So uh, sh should we expect uh, Swifts in in uh, p p Western approach to p to Crimean Tatars? Uh, I think right now uh, the situation is very fluid. Uh, even you know Ukraine doesn't have much of the agency, right? Uh, the situation is generally cast something between like a fight between NATO and Russia, or I mean Putin even does not recognize France and Germany, right? He wanted one-on-one -on -one talks with Biden. Uh, so, but once things are settled, uh, I think uh, the Crimean Tatar issue uh, will always be agenda uh, on the agenda for Ukraine because why Ukraine is also uh, paying so much attention to Crimean Tatars uh, because diplomatically it is also strengthening its its hand, right? Uh, Ukraine. Uh, went to the international court on behalf of the Crimean Tatars many times. Uh, and this is a kind of a showcase where you, Ukraine uh, present in front of the world uh, what it, uh, what the occupation really means, right? Because this is the really population that is persecuted. Uh, and Russia is on purpose are uh, choosing the most kind of uh, religious people among the Crimean Tatars, right? This is also another propaganda tactic. Actually, very, uh, very little percent of the Crimean Tatars are, uh, you know, has this kind of uh, religious identity. They're, they mostly have a secular identity. But, you know, Russia is trying to uh, create this negative image uh, again, you know, to, to kind of manipulate the uh, Western audiences, I would say. So the Crimean uh, Tatars will come to the agenda again, I think. Thank you. Uh, other questions, Thank commentaries? You. Uh, then I, I have a question. Uh, uh, what is, in your opinion, the role of the Crimean Tatar diaspora in the process of the deoccupation of Crimea? Oh, yes, I didn't have time uh, to uh, uh, expand on this. So thank you, uh, Metin Ojan, for this question. The Crimean Tatar diaspora actually uh, convened Crimean Tatar Congress right after the occupation in 2015 with the participation of, of course, Tatar leaders from Romania as well, but uh, from, uh, I think, around 14 countries in the world, including United States, Canada, right, uh, and many European states, um, Uzbekistan, uh, of course, Turkey, right? And this Congress was actually uh, uh, convened in Turkey. And it also became an important diplomatic event because it brought together the Turkish ministers and uh, Ukrainian foreign minister, uh, for example, attended personally to this Congress. So this showed the role of Crimean Tatars as uh, mediators between kind of uh, Ukraine and Turkey because, uh, you know, after Russia, Turkey is the kind of second uh, largest uh, and important player uh, in the Black Sea region because of its population and its size of its economy and also its uh, military, size of its military, right? So Ukraine wants to kind of attract uh, uh, Turkey on its own side. So uh, in this respect, Crimean Tatar diaspora, especially in Turkey, plays a big role because the Crimean Tatar diaspora claims that they are about three to five million uh, people in Turkey uh, coming from this Crimean Tatar route. So it's it's an important uh, minority. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, other uh, questions? Please. Uh, can I? Can I, can I address another question? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Doctor Felis Tutku. I, I, I'm 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 seeing so how Erdogan in the late period is trying to med to meddle in in, in Russian affairs. Uh, mm -hmm. Successfully, unsuccessfully, it's to be seen, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But. Do you expect an, uh, an improvement of uh, the Crimean Tatars' fate in Russia, under Russia right now, uh, after this uh, interference, Erdogan interference in, in this process? Uh, Erdogan, I think, wants to uh, play a mediating and peacemaker role uh among uh, ukraine and russia because turkey has good relations with both countries and certainly doesn't want to see a war in the region because turkey is importing you know oil and natural gas and even wheat from uh, both countries uh, oil and natural gas from russia but wheat from both russia and ukraine uh, so it has very really close trade relations. Also, Turkey receives large numbers of millions of tourists from Ukraine and Russia. So it's not uh, for, uh, in Turkey's interest to see a war there. That's why I think Erdogan is trying to be active. And in his uh, uh, in in because of its closer relations to Russia than West, I think Erdogan can have some leverage regarding the Crimean Tatars. Uh, he showed this, as I said, in the case of Ilmi Umerov and Ahtem Chiga. So he actually saved these prisoners from the Crimean prisons and in exchange for some uh, terrorists uh, uh, in, in Turkish prisons. Uh, and secondly, also Turkey sent a human rights monitoring uh, some professors actually is one of my professors and some some other people to monitor the in human rights situation of Crimean Tatars uh, in Crimea independently. And Russia normally doesn't permit that, of course, uh, from uh, Western countries, but Russia permitted that. And then these people could really uh, document uh, the extent of abuses against the Crimean Tatars. Uh, so uh, I think Erdogan does not have, you know, complete control or power to change the fate of the Crimean Tatars, but he has some leverage because of his political and economic ties, uh, you know, Turkey's political and economic ties to Russia. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Other questions? One of the participants asked me to uh, to ask you uh, a question. Uh, she's asking if uh, do you know the uh, number of the Tatars remaining in Crimea now, and if uh, there are pressure uh, pressures uh, from the Russians uh, to the Tatars to de declare themselves as Muslims, not as Tatars. But just their uh, religion identity, not their uh, ethnic identity. Uh, so uh, there are, there were two, according to the recent censuses, there were 270,000 Crimean Tatars before the annexation. Uh, we, uh, we guess that 30,000 of the Crimean Tatars left for Ukraine. They become IDPs in Ukraine. Uh, we don't know the exact number because Ukraine doesn't have a mechanism to ask whether you're a Crimean Tatar or Ukrainian when you're leaving Ukraine, right? Uh, so the numbers are cumulative. Uh, so this is a guess. What we guess there are 240,000 uh, around Crimean Tatars still there. Uh, and question about Muslim identity. 
So in general, I think, as you know, Russia had this recent uh, uh, constitutional referendum and there has been this ethnic policy that has been going on uh, since 2000s. Uh, so it, Russia is um, kind of rolling back all of the ethnic and national rights given to its populations like Tatars and Bashkurs and Chechens, right? Uh, and because of that, uh, there was this uh, oppression against uh, the expression of ethnic and national identity for these minorities. As you know, there are more than 100 minorities in Russia, indigenous people, right? Uh, the research says that these people uh, choose to uh, express their identity more in religious terms because it's kind of less, less persecuted and ironically more preferred for Russia, right? I mean, Russia, for example, right now loves Chechnya under Ramazan Kadyrov, right? Uh, Russia loves to show the world, you know, what kind of uh, radical <laughs> and uh, Islamic radical regime uh, Chechnya has. Uh, so in a way, I think that's kind of Russia's policy is the ethnification of these differences, right? So that's why until now Russia didn't really, for example, imprison all uh, thousands of majlis representatives because there are representatives of local majlises all around Crimea, uh, didn't persecute, imprison them because Russia did not did learn its lesson from the Soviet Union, did not want to create heroes, right? national so didn't want to create strong nationalism uh, that's i think kind of new ethnic policy uh, of russia okay thank you so uh, are there any other questions i have a question please, please. Uh, thank you this is uh, Professor. Do you know something about the role of uh, or the status of the uh, Tatars from Tatarstan comparison with uh, Crimea? It is possible to think that maybe Vladimir Putin wants to move the Tatars from Crimea in Tatarstan. Mm. And uh, another question uh, uh, concerning to this is. Uh, do you believe that in Tatarstan is a model, it's a good way for the Tatars from uh, from Russia, or uh, in sense which you said that uh, maybe it's a political of de-ethnicization, I understand well. De-ethnicization, de yes, de-ethnicization. Um, thank you very much. It's a very good question, actually. Uh, Putin uh, and you know policymakers in Russia tried to present Tatarstan as a model uh, during the just in the first days of occupation, right? Uh, we know uh, many representatives from the Tatarstan Republic came to uh, Crimea and uh, and tried to convince the Crimean Tatars it's not so bad in Russia, right? and uh, you can still have your language and culture and you won't be very different from us and then we can also develop close relations tataristan tatars in tataristan and tatars in crimea uh, but the fact of the matter is uh, even ethnically although their ethnonym are same right crimean tatars and tatars of volga right Kazan Tatars very different because Kazan Tatars emanate from Bulgarians, right? Turkic Bulgarians, Bulgars, Bulgars, and Crimean Tatars come from uh, Kupchaks, Turkic Kupchaks, a little bit Mongolians, and then also indigenous tribes like Goths and Sarmatians and Kimerians that Hazars that remain in Crimea. So there is kind of a thousand years between although they both speak turkic languages right uh, so ethnically they have a very kind of different history as well because crime in hanate 
also developed a different political identity than the, you know, Kazan Hanate, which was uh, conquered by Russia uh, even earlier on. And most importantly, even Soviet, during the Soviet times, Soviets tried this strategy, right? They erased the name ethnonym Crimean Tatar from all communist and Soviet books and newspapers, even from great Soviet encyclopedia. They said, from now on, you will be called Tatars formerly residing in Crimea, right? So they wanted to change their identity. And against this change, uh, Crimean Tatars, you know, uh, they uh, became more adamant of this ethnonym, this Crimean Tatar, and this kind of created, uh, kind of augmented their national identity and difference from other Tatars. I mean, they have been always trying to underline that they are different. They even, you know, created this Russian word Krimsko Tatar, right? So it is written, <laughs> written in one uh, word. <laughs> So normally, in according to Russian grammar, you know it has it has to be Krimsky Tatar, but they were saying themselves Krimsko Tatar, right? So they uh, they wanted to underline the importance of homeland in their identity, right? Because they are an exiled population. Uh, in a way, uh, their Tatar ethnicity is less important than their attachment towards their homeland their uh, indigenous identity. So we can say that it's very hard for Kazan Tatars and Crimean Tatars come together because they have evolved so differently, right? Because of their different political experiences. And also Crimean Tatars do not like uh, some Tatar politicians instrumentalizing themselves. Uh, to convince and recolonize Crimea, right? I mean, they they don't they don't believe in that, and we know the real national movement in Tatarstan is also persecuted as much as I mean, there are many Tatar nationalists in prison as well, right? So the ones who come to uh, Crimea to represent Putin are not really representing the Tatar, of course, nation. I, 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 I would like to add something. Uh, so, uh, mm, mm, Professor um, Chitiriga, uh, mm -hmm. yes, but I, I think that the, the relationship between uh, p p Kazan and Moscow is not so idyllic, uh, thanks to President Minihanov. Uh, there, are, there are two or three debates, uh, very strong debates in, in Russia right now concerning the, the, the official title of the president of uh, Turkmenistan, which is president, not governor, and uh, how, how we know it's forbidden to use uh, this title in Russia. Uh, the, the title is uh, fit only for the real president and only one president of Russia. And uh, there are uh, a few quarrels, I would say, about the... the the national language in Tatarstan and the use of Russians in education and, 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 and education systems. So, I, in my opinion, from this point of view, Tatarstan and Russian are cre clearly on the course of coll collusion, in my opinion. So, uh, Tatarstan, for the time being, is not interfering very vividly in this uh, debate uh, between Crimean Tatars and, and, and Russia uh, because of this uh, problem. So uh, I think Mr. Putin uh, only partially uh, can lay on the Mininhanov in this uh, perspective to show a good image of the uh, uh, Tatars in, in, in Russia. Mm -hmm. I accept. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the for the intervention. Uh, I think that uh, uh, we can close the the roundtable. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was great to to having Felis Soja, Professor Felis Tutkwaiden uh, here. 
I hope that uh, in the future we can invite you also at the at our university in a physically conference, not yeah, just yeah. a conference. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you all for uh, participating. Uh, and I hope to see you again uh, in other other meetings. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for much. inviting and for your contributions. Thank you very thank much. You. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.